This week we'll be talking about the synthesis of aspirin. The purpose of this lab is to synthesize the highest percent yield of crude aspirin. Then recrystallization will be done to purify what we made. So for the synthesis of aspirin, you're going to combine salicylic acid with acetic anhydride. And basically what's going to happen is that the two functional groups that are circled here are basically going to switch with one another. And you'll form acetyl salicylic acid and acetic acid. So acetyl salicylic acid is the um, technical term for aspirin, and then acetic acid is a side product. So the procedure for making aspirin, first you're, we're going to make a couple of water baths, um, one hot water bath and one ice water bath. And we're going to initially cool the DI water in the ice bath before we start. Then we're going to weigh out some of the salicylic acid and put it in an Erlenmeyer flask. We're going to add acetic anhydride to that and sulfuric acid and then make sure all the solid is dissolved. Then we're going to warm up the flask for about 10 minutes. And then um, after heating, we're going to set it aside to go to room temperature. Then we're going to really quickly cool it in the ice bath. And you'll see this in the video, but to start crystallization, we're gonna have to scrape the bottom of the flask. And so once we do that, you'll see crystals start to form. Um, it'll just look like a white cloudy kind of solution. And then we're going to add some cold DI water. And then we will filter off the crystals that we make um, and wash that with some more cold water. So it's really important that we cool down the DI water enough for these steps um, because warm water can end up dissolving our aspirin that we make. So it's really important when we're washing the crystals off that the water is really cold. And then we are going to put our dried crystals onto a watch glass and let it dry for a little while. Um, and that will be our crude aspirin. So crude is pretty much saying that it's not totally pure yet. Um, this is just the first batch of aspirin that we're going to make. So again, when it says crude, it means not totally pure. The second part of this lab is just a kind of a fun lab to learn about esters. So we're going to form what's called methyl salicylate. And an ester is basically that oxygen carbon, oxygen carbon group that you see circled on the right. Um, labeled ester. And so what's special about esters is that they're actually responsible for a number of smells in different things, especially fruits. So the smells of different fruits are because of the esters that are present in those fruit. So that's the, kind of the purpose of this part is that we're going to make the methyl salicylate on the right using salicylic acid and methanol. And we are going to smell that to um, just see what it smells like. So all we do is add methanol, salicylic acid, and some sulfuric acid. And we're going to warm up that mixture, add some water, and then we will smell the mixture and um, let you know what it smells like. So just some notes about the initial um, aspirin synthesis. Sulfuric acid is corrosive and very concentrated, so we're going to wear gloves in the video and make sure that we're really careful when dispensing it. And then um, you'll see that when we're scraping the flask to see the crystals, it's not going to look like perfect solids, um, it's going to appear cloudy. So you can see um, in the video 
that we'll be able to see some solid particles on the side of the flask and that's how you know that you got crystals. The next part of this lab is called recrystallization. And so this is a process that we will do in order to purify our aspirin further. So if you remember, we made a crude sample, which meant it wasn't totally pure. So this, the part, the purpose of this part of the lab is to further purify it. So the basic idea behind recrystallization is that you are just redissolving your solid in a hot solvent. So we're going to warm up our solvent. In this case, it's ethanol, and we're going to dissolve our um, crude aspirin into it. And then the idea is that the pure compound will be soluble in the warm solvent, but not in the cold solvent. But impurity will be soluble at any temperature. So what happens is you dissolve it in the hot solvent and then you cool it down, you cool down the mixture, and like we said, the pure compound is not going to be soluble when it's cold. So that pure compound will form a solid like you see on the third flask in this picture here. You see that white solid but the impurities will stay in the solvent because they're going to be soluble no matter what the temperature is. So basically you can just filter off the liquid from the solid and the idea is that the solid that you end up with is going to be very pure compared to what you started with. So we're going to allow plenty of time for this mixture to cool and we'll end up getting some better crystals as a result of that. And finally, the last test that we're going to do is the ferric chloride test. And that's going to test for the purity of the aspirin that we started with, as well as the recrystallized aspirin. And we're going to test some other things as well, just to compare the color scheme. So the idea behind this test is that you can see iron chloride, the FeCl3 there, reacts with that phenol functional group. So that's that OH attached to that ring that you see in salicylic acid. And when those two react with each other, you form a purple complex that you can see in the purple box there. So when we're adding these different six, uh, five, excuse me, different compounds to the iron chloride solution, if it turns purple, that means there's salicylic acid present. And if you remember, salicylic acid is something that we started with to make our aspirin. So if there's still some present in our either crude aspirin or recrystallized aspirin, then that solution will turn purple. And you can see, oh, maybe our solution wasn't that pure, or our aspirin isn't that pure. So we're going to test the crude aspirin, we're going to test the recrystallized, which should be more pure aspirin. We're going to do some salicylic acid so you can see the um, deep purple that it turns. Some acetyl salicylic acid, which remember is that um, technical term for aspirin. And we're also going to test some commercial or over-the-counter aspirin that you can just buy at the store just to see how pure that is. And then we'll have a blank that is just going to show you what the color is without anything in it. Um, so your tubes will, our tubes will end up looking like this picture here. So if it's a deep, deep purple, that means there's a lot of salicylic acid in there. If it's the lighter purple, there's less salicylic acid. And then if it didn't change any colors, it's going to be a slight yellow, clear color. So we will show you that in the video. and. You can determine how pure your sample or our sample is based on the depth of purple that it turned or if it turns purple at all. So we'll see. And for the calculations part, you're just going to be calculating the theoretical or percent yield. So remember how to do that. We're going to start with our grams of salicylic acid and you can use the molar mass and the molar ratio t 
to find the theoretical grams of your aspirin, which is y in this equation. And so you're going to find that for your theoretical yield of aspirin. And then you can use um, the percent yield to see how much you produced out of how much you were supposed to or how much we were supposed to. So the experimental yield, you're going to use the mass of the pure recrystallized aspirin, and then the theoretical yield is what you calculate above. So you can figure out what percent yield we got from the reaction. So just some reminders about specifically the report sheet um, and some questions that we typically get about this lab. So the mass, when it says mass of crude aspirin, that's from part one. That's the very first synthesis that we do. The mass of pure aspirin comes from part three, which is the recrystallization part. So both of the masses that we provide have the watch glass included. So you're going to need to subtract the mass of the watch glass from those masses that we provide. Then um, when you're calculating percent yield, use your recrystallized aspirin mass because we're further purifying it, so it's giving us kind of a better idea of exactly how much we got. And then there's a question, I think number two or so, that says comment on the formation of methyl salicylate, and that is just asking what it smelled like. So we'll tell you in the video what it smelled like, so that's how you can answer that question.